Greetings to you all, and of course, welcome to this broadcast. Thank you for being here with me this evening. And as you join the broadcast, I would be most appreciative if you can indicate to me whether you can see me clearly and you can also hear me clearly, as we know that we're dealing with internet connections in Guyana. And that in itself is an unfortunate experience in most Guyanese. But nonetheless, we're here. And I would appreciate the feedback as to whether you can see me also here clearly. Because this matter that I'm speaking to here, after many weeks, many days, I would wait, as usual, to give those who are supposed to be the loudest, to give them an opportunity to speak. Thank you so much, my brother Aubrey, for the feedback. I would wait for a while to give those like the Christian Council of Georgetown, the Georgetown Ministers Fellowship, the Linden Ministers Fellowship. I give you all time. I give the the Central Islamic Organization of Guyana, the other sects of Islam in Guyana. I would give the Hindu Dharmic Shabba. Give all of you all time. I would give men in civic society opportunities. I give the um the PPP supporters a chance to at least show us that you who claim to be guardians of democracy, that you could come out here and you can speak publicly to what this man is doing to Guyanese. I would give you time. Shalom, my brother T. And I would give the preachers a lot of time, as they would do, to at least furnish a statement or two to address this matter with this man, this, this person, who is thinking that he can further without any repercussion seek to intimidate and disrespect Guyanese. As a preacher, as an apostle of the Lord Yeshua, I refuse to be silent where there is unrighteousness or injustice, where there is wickedness on the part of those who are supposed to be leading this nation. And they're not leaders. They are servants. Jagger is never a leader of mine. He can never lead me. Here in Guyana, as they refer to us as the only English-speaking country in South America, we have stumbled upon, we well, not stumbled upon, it was known for a while, because Forbes Burnham, the late, the late Lyndon Forbes Samson Burnham, under his watch, they discovered oil on the land, and he capped it. He said, don't touch it. I'm beginning to think that Forbes Burnham, back then, had an inkling about what our nation shall become if we tap into this resource under the watch of the colonizers. Mel, good to see you, dear heart. And we have gathered since 2018, 19, somewhere around there. This is what they call first oil. Billions upon billions of Ghana dollars worth of profit and royalties. Mm -hmm. What I find interesting is that in what is now labeled the richest country per person in this world, Guyana, South America, is that country where I live. 
We have. Not what I have said, but what a transparency group would have discovered to be. Guyana as the most corrupt country in the English-speaking Caribbean. The wealthiest nation in this world, per person, per head, is also deemed yet again to be the most corrupt. It is led by the People's Progressive Party, and yet again, under the People's Progressive Party, we are deemed the most corrupt. Have I not been telling you all this for a very long time that Guyana is corrupt at the top? This is, I'm not just speaking as a Guyanese now, I'm speaking here apostolically as well because I'm here to address you as a preacher tonight. Have we not, have you not been told by me for the longest while that at the, the helm, at the top of the tier of our society is the most corrupt people that you can find? Bharat Jagdil. Shetty Jagan, Donald Ramutar, Janet Jagan, Sam Hines, Irfan Ali, all of them have not produced a single person who can be called a statesman. There is no PPP president who has ever produced a single individual who is classified internationally as a statesman. Never. What does that tell you about the very essence, spirit, and culture of the PPP? I'm dealing with Jagdio tonight, but I want to give you what is called a preamble to what I'm speaking here. Can anybody who supports the PPP name for me one statesman produced by Jagdio or Chedi or Janet or Donna Ramuta? Name one. On the Forbes Burnham, with Forbes Burnham, would have been the likes of Sir Shridat Ramphal, Sir Rashley Jackson. I think Rashley Jackson was knighted. It doesn't matter to me why he's, if he's knighted because I don't respect anything but England. But I'm just saying to you. Let Jagdio name one person since his name is on my broadcast. And to those of you, since I mentioned Jack Dio and Eve Larry, you have to sit with your tea or your coffee or your Coca-Cola and you have to sit and watch me hardcore because all of you, or most of you, I should say, are lackeys and you have no option. Well, not you who do it, but those who command you to do it are lackeys. They have to do what he said and they have to police Guyanese. And yet, that's what I'm getting to this point. Yet they want to tell the United Nations Human Rights Council that we are free to criticize them. That's what the PPP actually sent the writing. That Guyanese, like me, we are free to criticize them and nothing happens to us. Well, we'll talk about that, Barrett. Because if we were free to criticize y'all, why would you tell the, 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 the media that after Gail Teixeira was questioned, you want names of people and organization that would have reported to the UN that Guyanese are being treated in a very, very unsavory and discriminatory manner. And we're being oppressed, but not we, because you all can oppress me. But there's great oppression in this country. If you are treating people so well, why would you want to have names of people who complained about you? If you say they're free to criticize, then why do you want the names? And you said, Jack, you, that you want those names in the spirit of transparency. You, of all people, would speak to transparency. Well, I'm ready to address you tonight. Because I would really like to know what has become of the preachers in this country, 
What has become of the Imams? You all are in Ramadan. At least you could speak righteously in Ramadan. At least you could talk the truth. You don't have to fight in Ramadan, but you could tell the truth while you fast. Fast and tell the truth. Fast and tell the truth. Pandits, tell the truth. Preachers, you can be so bold to stand on pulpits and speak against the likes of me who speak about your wickedness. You take money from people in the name of tithe and, and tithe is food. But you can't stand in the pulpits in your churches to tell the truth. That something is wrong. When Bara Jagbio could sit and say that he would like to have names of people who complain to the UN about his behavior or the PVP's behavior in this country. Who the hell does Bara Jagbio think he is? That's what I want you to tell me. I want you all to tell me and for Jagbio, you to tell me. Who do you think you are? Are you of the view that you possess so much authority in this country that even at the highest level in reference to world policing the UN, you could try this foolishness? So you're not satisfied that, that they came here to question. So in essence then, my brothers and my sisters, my responsibility is always to seek to educate, inform, and to rightly present to you that which you should hear. Hopefully you receive it. You're telling us as Guyanese, that this body called the Human Rights Council or Commission at the highest level of international relations would focus on Guyana, South America once the second or third poorest nation in this hemisphere apart, apart from Haiti now we are under the radar now they are looking at us and you want to tell me Barra Jagmio that these people like, like with Vice News you and Irfan didn't Learning lesson. So when Vice News came and they began to say that you're selling out things and they're watching and, and they got they got Sue Jerome involved and say that Sue give them information, you and Irfan, of course Irfan can do no better. Irfan decided he's going to disrespect the young lady who conduct, conducted the interview when you cannot find two or even one journalists in this country at this time that can match that young lady. Irfan decided, Irfan who can barely read. Irfan Ali, who is semi-literate. We have a person who's paid to be president and he can barely read. That person can disrespect a journalist of that young lady's caliber. Irfan. And Jagdio, who apparently based on the lackeys, the puppies, the, 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 the mange ridden dogs that he has around him. He's of the view that because these stupid little boys hang around him and suck up to him and always say yes because of what they know what they'd get in their hand afterwards. These people would have convinced him that fact finding and fact checking no longer exists in our society. When it's actually even more potent now. So he's convinced himself that he can just say things that are totally inaccurate and distant from the truth and just get away with it. Hence, when Vice News came, of course, working, and I know how they function, I know how they function, they would have worked behind the scenes for a long time. And then they come now with the evidence. Jack Dio dis sought to dismiss it when he was caught red-handed. And when Vice News carried the report that Jack Dio himself is on video saying that he interacts with business people beyond cabinet, he would talk with them. Yes, he meets with them, he said. Not he sends them to Ashi saying who's the minister within the pres ministry of presidency with responsibility for finance. That is such a stupid term. It makes me upset every time I say it. We've never had that nonsense. There's something called a minister of finance who's at the ministry of finance. These demons have found a way to have one man control the money and another man talk about the money. That's what Ghana is like right now. One man controls the money, the treasury, and another man talks about the money. And here we have Bharat Jagdio. This man, 
not learning his lesson from Vice News. The United Nations began to pitch certain questions at Gail Teixeira, and that disgraceful woman couldn't find it within herself, to be honest. And they want to suggest that the United Nations Human Rights Council would have been, would have been ill-informed or misinformed. Yet again, the PPP is never guilty at the top of doing any wrong thing. They, in their minds, apparently, are convinced that they are never guilty of doing anything wrong. And so here we have a situation in our hand whereby these people believe that even at the United Nations level, they can throw the stupid responses out and stupid reactions out and everybody has to buy it and say, yes, the emperor is naked, but the emperor is wearing the best clothes in the world. Jagu is a perfect example of the emperor's new clothes, that story, if you know it, where the emperor is walking around naked and people have to cheer. Oh my God, the emperor's clothes are so amazing. That's Jagdio. You have to say what sounds good to these people because you get no contract. You get no cutback. Your name is goes into some black book, whatever it is to talk about, and Jagu just writes you off. And once he says something to you, then this 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 mythical moron has people thinking, "Oh my God, oh, I'm I'm afraid of his victimization." That's that's the kind of society in which you found yourself right now, where men with wives and children are like boys at the feet of a man who doesn't even have a child, as far as I'm aware. Preachers who say that y'all Jesus are so powerful, you can't talk against Jagdio. Let me deal with y'all. How could you say that your Jesus is so powerful and that at that name, every knee will bow? Well, how come back bow Jagdio is not bowing to your Jesus and you bow into him? How could it be that your Jesus is, so, is, Jesus is so powerful and one Hindu man who's not even a practicing Hindu got you like a set of girls and afraid to talk? You should have been screaming the loudest when this man said that he wants to know who complained. Because it doesn't seem as if this has registered to Guyanese, even the opposition yet. When he said, I don't care about no transparency garbage he wants to talk. When Jagdio wants to say that he wants to have the names of people who would have reported to the UN, that should cause a, 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 a tremendous uproar in the church, in the mosque, in the temple, in all religious sector to say, what is wrong with this fellow? You don't seem to understand the extent to which that statement goes. Let's not forget that Jagdio mentioned certain names. And in mentioning certain names, nobody from the PPP dares to be seen with them. Even up until today. When he spoke about certain names or disliked certain people, nobody from the PPP, all those grown men with wives and children, you can't dare allow yourself to be caught even commenting or reacting with a like or a whatever on some people's page, including mine. You're not grown men. Grown men. Some of you have peanuts, not scrotums or testicles, you peanut bearers, you cannot even be man enough to be seen talking to me or to somebody else who they may deem to be some opponent. Even those of you in the PNC and AFC, APNU, AFC, you all can't be seen talking to me either because some of you Guyanese don't know have already got your hands soiled with the money from the other side. And it's our money that they're giving to you all. You've got opportunities presented to you and you're, you're sucking it now. You all are a disgraceful set of people. And this man could come out to say that after the complaints were leveled and the UN began to question Gail Teixeira, about the PPP, P, PPP's behavior, you can't even say. How in the world could Jagdio say he wants to know who said it? Not that it didn't happen. 
Not that he, he presents evidence to show that it was all a lie. No. It was guilty. She didn't have a chance to really prepare herself. You have to prepare yourself to tell the truth. This is the first time that I'm hearing in our country's history or in reference to dealing with human beings that you have to be prepared to tell the truth. I have never seen that. If I know the truth about something, I'd have to prepare myself for it. If I am aware of the truth of something, I talk. I don't need to be prepared to tell you the truth. But the propaganda peddling machine called the PPP have to prepare the lies. Hence, even the name Dr. Vincent Adams arose at that forum. And Gail, according to Vincent and the records that we know, lied. The man was working in the USA. with security clearance to some of the most classified bits of information areas to, that you can go. And she suggested that he had something to do with ExxonMobil while he was working with US, US environmental people. This woman is, I don't know if, if some of y'all get how sick this country has become in reference to those who claim to be leaders of it. Jack Dio wants names. He has interest in who complained, not in what the complaint was about. So Jack Dio wants to suggest that it's called transparency if you can say, well, Nigel London said this, or Mark Benstrup said that, or Henry said that, or Sanjeev Dattidin said that, or maybe... Anil Nandalal said that. So he wants to know who said it. And if he's telling who said it, then it's called being transparent. So Barrett, let me dissect for you, since I know that you want to appear, given the people you choose to be around you, and I will say this to you as often until you get as upset as possible. You master, you function best with people who are unintelligent, who are scholastically dwarfed, who are intellectual midgets. They are the people that you can have around you and function best with them. Those who may be, may be presenting themselves to be a little intelligent, you can only function with them if they are pathologically mendacious, if they lie more than the devil himself, if they can be as mendacious as possible, where they could see something being blue and call it orange. You would work with them. You. And you don't seem to get it. That the UN would never ask you certain questions. Dummy. Gail. Dummy PPP. The United Nations will never ask you at that level certain questions without first having done their background, their research, their background information gathering. And so when they come and ask you something, they are 50 pieces of information they have to ask you that one question. And they already know the answer that you may want to give because they already know the answer in the first place. You didn't get that. Because at Freedom House, you, you don't function like that. At Freedom House, everybody has to kiss your, your socks and your toes, but not with the UN. And you wouldn't even ask yourself, Barrett, Maybe you are asking yourself for having diarrhea when you ask yourself the question. Why is this influx, this sudden great flow of people from the West coming to you? You don't seem to remember that with Jim Jones, Congressman Ryan came to see what's going on. And they remember that? I mean, Jim Rochelle killed him at the airport. The people killed him. Right, right, right. You don't seem to realize that once the U.S. The US sends certain faces here to y'all, it's because they have got enough information to act on. The U.N. needs to have Jagu. 
a meeting with you and to tell you who said what, to know how Ghanaians are living. Jagdeo, you're living in an internet, in an information age where the social media platforms have sunk on your boat. You, you said it in Port Marat, that social media is what made you lose in 2015. It is even more intense now. So I don't know what's going to happen to you. Because you can't control this. You could control newsroom and wherever else it is and, 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 and NCN. You can't control this. You cannot control my phone. You can monitor what I say, but you can never control it. And people in the UN and all over the world can see, like I said, the whole world saw me going to try to rig an election, but the whole world can see what you're doing to Guyanese now. So let me address you, mister. Let me address you further. You said, or your party claimed, not you, that we Guyanese are free to criticize y'all. You have nothing. You said the, there is freedom of the press. That's what you said. You Wait. If there is freedom of the press, how do you have someone who is not even elected to serve in the media fraternity, the Broadcasters Association? If, how do you say, Jack Dio, that you want transparency? You believe you want names for transparency. There's freedom of the press, but critic, according to what Kaito News report reported, critic of all people, Mikel Rodriguez, who cussed but murdered this and murdered F this and 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 and, and pokey and lowly and all kind of crap. Look at the person you have. And I have nothing personal against Mikel. Because I talk to him as normal as ever now. But I'm seeing reference to international matters here. You would have Mikel as the person in Quantic Culture News who is choosing who will ask the questions. Mikhail. And you want transparency? Huh? And this freedom of the press, but one from the press association is not authorized to conduct a press conference? Huh? You want freedom, you speak to freedom of the press, Barajag deal. But when certain matters arise, like Dharam Lal's situation, where was the freedom, Jack Dio? Because if there would have been freedom of the press, we would know where, 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 the, where the girl would have been for so long. Somebody said, you're not seeing the comments? Or we leave and return for me, please. I don't, I'm not seeing comments a lot either, so... I'm seeing your comments, Brother Arby. If you can hear me, I'm seeing your comment. Somebody on Facebook, please comment if you can if if you're seeing others, because I know what they do. They try to monitor this page, but they can't control it to that extent. They can report it and then Facebook is going to limit how many people can see and what you can see. I know the deal, but at the end of the day, the broadcast will be here. So let me see this. Let me get this clear to, for you all. So some people cannot see. See? Some people can't see the comments or the scan. I, I, Facebook does this. So leave and return, you can see it. Hopefully that will work. But they speak to freedom of the press. Freedom of the press. And if there is freedom of the press, then why is there not freedom or was there not freedom for us to know where a Nazi Fedrix was, the girl? If there would have been freedom of the press, why was the press not allowed to ask Haken or Blanham certain questions about Dharam Lal? If there's freedom of the press, how is it that you, Barrett, can only be interviewed by 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 critic who is not even a part of the press the press association association? Tell us please. Tell us how you could be interviewed by somebody who is not, who was not a part of the Guyana Press Association. Huh? There's freedom of the press, but presses, but the press association, mem press association members cannot interview you and ask you the hard questions. Tell us, Barrett. There's freedom of the press. 
Hmm? Melanie, I can see your comment. You said, still not seeing, but it's okay. So I can see. There's freedom of the press, Barrett. And we're free to criticize you. So let me address you on that part. Since you are you are sent a follow-up document to the United Nations that we are free to criticize you. And it's no problem. I ask you, Barrett Jagdeo, and all of those who have to lick the butt of the PPP leadership, to tell all of the world, including the UN, to name, remember I asked this, Barrett? For three years I've been asking the question. Name two, three, or four, maximum, just four people, who are critical of you, and you have allowed them to have one single contract in any field in this country, or you have allowed them to function in a job in the public service with promotion. Name one, two, three or four people who criticize you and are called public servants and they, they remain in their position. Name them. Name one regional officer like Deron Adams who speak against you and you facilitate certain developments like us having a new regional democratic council office in region 10. You are so sick that you would have in the heart of a town by the bus park and the market, sandwich between the two, would be the regional the RDC office. With floods at the lower flat, damages our taxpayers' dollars worth as products. You don't care. The sewage is backing up in that place. And you don't, you would not put on the budget for new building to be built because there, because Lyndon is PNC. But you're not, you, you remember you're allowed to be critic, people are allowed to criticize you. You don't have, there's no issue. There's no issue, Barrett, but you could do that to Region 10. Remember now, there's no issue with people who criticize you. But at the same time, nobody could be seen with me from your camp. Remember that? I know of people in your camp who have to tell, who to tell me straight up, I can't be seen with you. I can't do this with you. I cannot do that with you. But you're free to be criticized. You of all people. Is it true that you said that Nigel Hughes, for example, never wear silk? He'd never be a senior counsel for as long as you have the, the power? Is he a senior counsel now? Look at the people you've made senior counsels in this country ahead of Hughes. What does that tell you about yourself, if that were the case? Let us not forget, Barrett, that the matter of the justices arose with the Chief Justice and the Chancellor of the Judiciary. That matter arose. Two African women, two black women, two of them at the top of the justice, the judicial circles in Ghana, the Chief Justice and the Chancellor. Barrett, can you tell the UN why neither of them has been appointed and affirmed? To come, you could talk. I mean, come on, Barrett. You could speak. Remember that you, you, there's no issue here. Remember that? Remember those two people? Can you tell the UN, Barrett, why Irfan Ali has failed, and this is the fourth year we are now, to commission or appoint the Judicial Commission, such a critical body. That's why for me, I want you all risk taking me before the ERC so that I can say I want to appeal their decision. And then when I say that, they must tell me that there's no appointed arbiter. Arbiter because that, that appointment comes from the Judicial Commission and if Ali does not appoint a judicial commission, then I cannot appeal to that person to say the ERC did me wrong. And then I'll sue y'all. That's what I want. So that's what I tell black people and, and how I feel about, about what you're doing. But you don't take the bait though. Because I want y'all to take me before the judicial commission, the ERC. So I could appeal and then I'll, they'll have to explain to me why I can't appeal to a person since A finale failed to a point for four years, the Judicial Commission. But things are okay in Guyana. 
and the UN human rights body should feel okay when the basic right to appeal a matter heard by the ERC, Ethnic Relations Commission, is not afforded to Guyanese because of A finale? And you want names of who complained? Huh? You want the names of who complained instead of dealing with what they complained about? So further, I would say to you, I would say this to you, John, you further, further I speak. You don't want to have the responsibility of dealing with the nonsense that you create. You must be praised for the garbage that you do in this country, which includes the fact that you have not given you, as they say, one person who is a public critic of yours a contract. Not even one person. What does that tell the world about you? Because you can't name one. What does that tell the world about you? and your PPP. They mustn't complain, Barra Jagdeo. Did the United Nations not have access because they have an office here? They don't have access, Jagdeo, to, to telephones to see that in Mocha, Arcadia, policemen had their, their, their knee on a black woman in the mud, in the rain, while they bulldozed a house and were going to knock houses down with people inside. Oh, they didn't see that. But the whole world saw, you, the whole world saw, Granger trying to steal an election. But the whole world can't see that you all had black people in Mocha Arcadia under your feet by elements of the police force in other places. Oh, the whole world didn't see that. The whole world don't, doesn't see that for Linden, you have 20 contracts, 30 contracts, 40 contracts. But for Region 6, 400 plus roads, maybe 500 roads. Contract. But for Region 10, oh no, 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 just give them 20 or 30 roads or so. 40 roads a month, or if, if so many. For Region 10, like the road, I told y'all, where, 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 where Nottinghamshire Road is, just around that, around the corner, right where Selvin Sills is, just up the road from there, is a road that is impassable for decades on the Granger, on the Jagdio, under all y'all, that road was never fixed. And you refuse to fix it. But we mustn't complain to the United Nations. Because any complaint against you warrants your asking, who did it? Because you just want to know who did it for knowing sake. And the preachers are quiet. Who are you? What authority do you have to find out who did anything? Are you the president? Huh? Are you the president of this country? If finally didn't ask any name, you asking for names. Furthermore, when the UN, when the United Nations Human Rights uh, uh, Commission questioned Gail Teixeira. How is it that Irfan Ali don't, didn't hold a press conference? You need to tell the UN Jagdi why you meet with the press more than Irfan Ali does. I didn't know that you were the president. If Irfan is paid to be president, why do you talk to the press more than Irfan does? If Irfan is president, why can't Irfan answer questions about ExxonMobil? Why do you have to answer it? Tell the whole world that. Tell the UN Jack deal that in Linden, you could come to a club called MSC, Ramson and y'all, Mackenzie Sports Club, where it's a member's club. And now, Mr. Jack deal, for the year, nobody collected my membership dues. And nobody in Linden could explain to me how I could be a member of a club. And there's no one collecting dues for me because the government took over the club. Tell them, any other part of Ghana, we all did that. Come and talk, man. Come and tell the United Nations that Lenin is so special that you could treat us this way. 
Come and talk. Tell the world, Barajanglio, why it is in the hilly, sand, and clay belt region where mostly black people live, you have not issued one single mining license for us to mine sand. I applied three times at least and can't get a license to mine sand in the hilly, sand, and clay belt region. Tell the whole world, Barrett, why along the, the highway only one black person that I could see has a, a license to mine sand. Everybody else in black. Tell us who owns the loam pit on the highway, Barrett. Who has the license to mine loam? Loam is one of the main ingredients for making a road. You're all using like crazy now. You compact it to make the road. Who has access to and right to mine loam on the highway? Not a black man. But you're not racist and you're not divisive. You're not discriminatory, but it just happens. It just happens inevitably. And, um, you know, it just happens coincidentally that these things all fall in the lap of Indian people. And I live in the hilly sand and clay belt region and can't mine sand in peace, if at all. Tell the whole world, why do that region then? Tell the world that sand now has got so much worth that if you only give a black man a sand pit, he would no longer be a poor man. Tell the world, Barrett, why, you, why the government has stopped issuing sand pit licenses. Or they never did it. You gave nobody in Linden a sand pit license. But you are not discriminatory in any way, are you all? The PPP is not discriminatory. The PPP just falls upon people's opportunities and crushes people's opportunities, crushes people's desires, crushes black people's whenever they have a chance to do so. And then they pick out one or two or three of them and say, okay, then look, look, we dangled some black puppets before you all. They're not bad. We're not bad people. Look, we have one, two or three or four black boys who we can just string along like fools. But we're not racist. We just tolerate some black morons around us. Yet again, what you have coming up for town week? Ramson's, uh, tell, tell people about it. What I've been telling you all the time, whenever it comes to Linden and festivities and black people in this country, it's, it's Keng, Skelly Beng, Watrush, Warthog, Yard Fowl, Mangy Dog, some stupid moron. That's all, that's all that 94 per could, could bring. Some idiot. In the midst of the worst things happened to us, all black people in Ghana get is some no good, not a fat, stupid person. To cuss up a number, shoot somebody in the head, kill somebody, do something. That's what black people deserve. And what do you do for the Indian side? You show your culture. You show that you're in the ballrooms of, of Marriott. You should you building all the roads and the highways, but black people smoke weed and shoot one another. And that's what you want to present to our country. You. But it's not it's just by accident these things happen under your watch. It is just by chance that as I've said, of the hundreds and thousands of contracts issued in this country, you can't name two or three of four black people who have opposed you and got one of them. Can you tell the United Nations, Barrett, why do we have still have an issue with the voters list? You so you want to talk about democracy or transparency? Be transparent, Barrett. Tell the whole world. If you want names, you remember that? You want the names of people who reported to the UN and you want names of organizations who report to, to the UN. Barra, tell, tell the UN, please, why you didn't want to be transparent about the election petitions. I mean, if you want transparency, let's be transparent. You can't beat that. If you want to be transparent, then you should say to the UN through Gil Teixeira, we want to be transparent. So let the, the documents presented to, 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 to the Chief Justice acting, let that be made known. And let us, let us approach the court for the court to determine 
exactly what Abdu wanted to say about this election. Let the court bring forth a cause evidence to come forward to show the Granger rigged. That's transparency. Or oh, you don't want to be transparent about the election, do you? Let us be transparent as to why Lewin Field presented four or five different numbers in reference to results. Let us be transparent as to why Crowley couldn't accept what Lewin Field said. Can you be transparent about that, Barrett? Can you be transparent as to why Hanuman said he has 700 witnesses? Witnesses sworn that they saw Mingo rigging and he can't find one to this day to have Mingo answer in court. To, to this witness's claim that he saw Mingo rigging? Can you please be transparent and let us let the whole world see this operation in the court? For the Barrett, can we be transparent as to why someone at the Natural Resource Ministry could just, I mean, wake up from a nightmare and just write off 211 million US dollars from ExxonMobil? I say just pay three. To the Guyanese populace. Can you be transparent as to why the person just got two weeks of no paid leave, Jack, Jack Dio? I mean, the, the guy didn't go to jail for a day. Um, since we're talking about you all want to be transparent here now, can you please be transparent as to why Nigel Darmlal was not in the lockup when the girl said he buggered her until she bled? Well, the report came from, that came. The girl issued to the police what is called a no further action dpp said she issued a no further action statement um dummy donkeys certified jack donkeys for her to issue a no further action statement means she asked action to be taken dummy you can't tell police or the dpp i want i don't want to take further action if you didn't ask the action to be taken so a nasty dummy you had to ask for action for action to be taken, and then you would say, I don't want any further action. That's what a no further action statement is, according to law. So when the action was sought, why wasn't Daramlal in jail? And Bobby never got, exactly, Sally was never just a thank you, Annette. Tell me why Daramlal did not face five minutes in a cell or in handcuff like, like, like a gunsi. Tell us all, since you want to be transparent, I want transparency too, Barrett. I believe in good governance. So present to me and to the United Nations and all of us transparency in the situation. Tell the world where Nasi was. Because after all, you want to be transparent. Tell the world why Damlal was not arrested up until today. He was not in handcuff. For a complaint that he buggered a 16-year-old girl until she bled. Tell us why, since you want to be transparent, why Damlal is still able to talk. He has names. I mentioned my name. I'm waiting for you. If you know how long, I'm waiting for you. Patiently waiting for you to come to my face and tell me you have my name and, and you know whatever you know. The Guyanese public is waiting by our drug deal because we are of the view that you desire to be transparent. So please be transparent. Tell the whole world why that boy, Gosai, could write off 211 million US dollars and tell X to pay 3 million, not 200 million. And you said, or you all said, he'll have two weeks, no pay. That's his penalty. Um, he's still working there? Oh, but you're transparent, huh? Since you speak to transparency, Barajag Dio, can you tell us and show us the evidence in reference to what happened in Madia? 
I believe in transparency. So you could tell us why they took Matthews from the building to start filling roads before they did any investigation, any commission of anything. And tell us, Jaggi, why there was not a coroner's inquest into the death of 20 of our children in Madia. 20, not nine, not two. 20 of our children were burnt to death. And instead of having an investigation launched immediately, you put people took the debris and start filling road potholes in Madia. Priya showed up, Priya, Priya, Fire Priya, of course, every fire, apparently she, she's somewhere present nearby. Priya shows up in Madia with ropes and men and they were walking all over the place in the debris. Tell us why that happened again. Um, can you be transparent to tell us, Jack Dio, who owns certain oil blocks in this country? And who would have flipped it if, it's, if it would have been flipped? Can you be transparent to tell us how it's possible for so many Chinese nationals to be running quarries and stuff in our country as if Guyanese have the ability to do it? I got a complaint that one of them, all of the employees are Chinese. Not even one Guyanese works there at one of the quarries. Is that true, Barat? Because we want transparency from you. I am highly disappointed in the silence of our wider society. It is frightening. And I would like to leave you with an announcement that I have evidence to support the Bangladeshi move. We have 500 Bangladeshis, not African people, not black people, will be brought here. The sell, the catch is bring them. They're not paid taxes. They're not paying for housing. Since you want to be transparent, tell the whole world. I have evidence for you to present to counter why you are paying, Guyanese will be paying for Bangladeshis to live here at no expense but food. No cost to them. You paying their income tax, you paying their housing, you said they have no taxes to pay whatsoever. There's a path to citizenship where they'll be able to vote. Tell the whole world, Barrett, why no black person has a privilege. Why didn't Haiti's problems? Why can't you bring Haitians here to work? They're very intelligent people. Why can't you bring Nigerians here to work? Why can't you attract those from other African territories that look black? Can you tell us, Barrett? And I do remember that you all said that you weren't really having a nursing issue. There's no, there's no shortage. I remember that. I remember vividly you all said nurses, there's no problem with nurses. How are we bringing 500 here now? You want 100 ICU nurses from Bangladesh? Why? You said there wasn't a problem with nurses. You all weren't losing any nurses. You said it, there was no such issue. So how, why are you bringing 500 of them here? And give them free housing? Huh? Free housing? All they have to pay for is food? And they can also become citizens within, in two years they'll be permanent residents in Guyana. In five years they'll be citizens, really. Bangladeshis? Okay. But you're not racist. And Bangladesh is a Muslim state, as far as I'm aware.
we are on to you. And we can see straight through you. Because teachers who teach our nation's children, who toil for next to nothing, have to pay taxes. Nurses have to pay taxes. Policemen have to pay taxes based on their rank. The people you call public servants pay taxes, but you could bring Bangladeshis here. And as an attraction for them, as a part of the package to attract them here, you tell them no taxes will be paid by them. So we have to cover it. The Qatari Hotel, can you be transparent and tell us, Jack Dio, who is behind that and how these people can acquire land in Ghana to build a whole hotel at Carifest Avenue? Be transparent, please. Because Qatari business is getting 10 years, no taxes. So Ghana is becoming a tax haven for the PPPs, invitees. You bring them in, no taxes. You want to build a hotel, no taxes. Well, that's hotel. Now you want to come and work as a nurse, no taxes. We'll pay all for you. And then GR will breathe down the throat of a Guyanese businessman and said, if he makes $100 million, he has to pay at least, I think, 30 or 35 million in taxes. But Bangladeshis could come and work here and pay nothing. Qatari Hotel could come and work here and they make half a billion dollars in a year. They don't have to make any, pay any taxes. If they make $1 billion in that year, they pay no taxes. But a Guyanese businessman is not getting to be told, would not be told, for the next six months, you pay nothing. For the first five months of the year, we give you a tax holiday. Because you've invested in the state, you employ people. I said it to you before, my desire is to see that, for example, if, if a businessman is successful, you reward him for that. If he employs more than 50 people or more than 20 people, he gets tax relief. Not taxes on his head. Exxon Mobil, no taxes. Exxon is worse. Exxon Mobil, we pay for every single expense. If they want to bring a plane to Ghana, we have to pay for it. If they want to bring buy all the Ford luxury vehicles, we have to pay for it. For every meal they eat, they want to, we have to pay for it. And y'all sit back, some of you, and allow this to happen. I see somebody say, let's go to the airport when they come in. They mustn't come in, period. Airport. And this kicks in the 20, in April of 2024. That's next month. This Bangladeshi story. Let us respond in a manner that will make the PP realize that we're not playing with them. I hope you have courage. I hope you have strength. And I hope you have the resolve to not allow this to happen in your country. Thank you for your time. Until we meet again, bye-bye.